Greetings, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sharing this day with you is Pastor Mpongwadi. I am tasked and honored to open this ceremony with a prayer. As we are about to give God praises for his creation of 55 years, celebrating his son, Mr. Pakiso Ben Matebula, allow me to take one verse of the epistle of Paul as I'll be reading from the book of Ephesians 6, verse 18. I'm taking translation NIV 18. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the lord's people i pray thank you lord for the life of a child to parents, for the life of the life partner, business partner, a father, a brother, uncle, colleague, neighbor, more so your son. We thank you for your purpose, for his life on earth. Lord, we thank you for reminding us to learn to number our days through honoring your word. Paul says in one of his epistles, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. The heavens have gained through the life of Mr. Matebula. To be absent in the body for the believer is to be present with the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word is the light that overcomes the darkness. May this light order our steps. May this light be the lamp on our feet as we walk throughout the day in the celebration of your creation. Honoring you, God. Your promises are yes and amen. Your word says you are near the broken heart as you mend and stitch our hearts, Father God. We thank you. Yes, Lord. Restore the souls of the family as they grieve. Let them not use their own understanding but trust you, God, as your son, Jesus Christ, left us with the Holy Spirit, we allow to be captured this afternoon so that justice can be done through your word. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.
mpo kia dumedi sa si chaba sa Yesu na kile matapelo Mrs Kampepe kisinye hili kile mezi kia fokola kile buhatlo tala pengla matebula la pale na la matebula mudi muri kopanze ka 1964 bana ba kuki le bana ke ba itsa ka go tloha bolseng ba bona ka ofela bana ba rona le kuki ba ba tlae ba dithaka ga go ba shebisisa ba kiso ba ke hanza ho la ene le ngwana ya ratang botho bo afrika ha holo o di e ile le hong ka pasa e le nyona id o ne a sa batle ho hang o tlile ho nna a re a o se mathapelo me o re ise ke tshwanetse ho nka pasa ha ke batle ntho yeo ke a tseba hore ke tshwanetse ho nka pasa emba ke nka pasa ke mo afrika ke le mo afrika fatseng la afrika ha ke batle ntho yeo ka re ho yena o tla tshwara ngwana ngwana yeso a re mangwane ho lukile ba tla ntshwara ba tla nkutlwa ba tla mpone ka 1985 ke le ka mo pata 3 months ke mo khiela ka tloka ke mo khiela ha ke ya mosebetsi a ba tlo ka di hipo yena le bo ka pele ke mmuse wa nako yeo a nko pa hore ke se ke ka le ka ka jwetsa kuki mo wa leng teng o bana ha ba fihla ba tla motlala ka ditlapa di dimpama me o tla tsoha ha bona dithunya o tla bua ke ile ka thola jwalo ke sa robale ka 2 weeks a re ho nna ke a tsoka ha re ho nna ke a mo o sa tsebeng teng empa le tla dula le tseba gore ke a phila ke tla o tsibisa ka mehla murapela ka hana o ile a mamela a nkutlwa ke tseba melemo ya haila penglak bana ba ka ke bana ba kuki ba bana ba kuki ke bana ba ka na ko haeyo ya go bua ka ka paki buka ya paki na le matlaka matlabolo na ko ke motinyane wana ka o tla dula o le dipilo ntsa rona ke mo hau haholo ke a le boha le hau le bima hau ne o tshanetse o re be ko ena ya buang ka rona batswa di ba hau empa ke rona re buang ka wena bo bala ka khotso mathebolo bo bala ka khotso ngwana ka re tla dula re ho kula ka mehla My name is Sobandu Drogo from Cape Town. I'm Pakiso's friend, comrade, brother. We met in 1989 at DWC. He approached me for an assignment. He had forgotten an assignment at Somafco and he asked me to assist him to organize a car to go and fetch his assignment and drop it at, at the campus. I did that without knowing me. I mean, knowing him, and later on, I kind of uh, wondered how he identified me. How did he know that I was from Kukuletu? It was kind of strange the way he approached me. And Pakiso answered my suspicions with, with a lot of more questions. He told me that uh, I was originally from Vista, he told me that uh, I'm an Azapo activist at Vista University PE. I came over there and he also related a story where myself and Matulandila bought guns 
four guns the previous three weeks from someone. And I was shocked. I was real shocked. I didn't know who he was. And and I could figure out to say, and I'm talking to an apartheid agent, who's this guy? And then he mentioned a common friend, uh, Ikubal. And I quickly realized I got a picture that he was a PAC activist, APLA, and he had links with the guys for the Kibla guys in Cape Town. So our relationship grew from there. It was based on trust, based on brotherhood, and also we started uh, training each other, intellectually training each other, um, revolutionary. Um, from there, Pakiso moved to my place. He started staying in Kukuletu. He found my place as a safe house, as a home. And we worked together. We did a lot of hustling. We did a lot of political training, intellectual uh, growth. There's two comrades who loved each other. I introduced him to my friends. They loved him, they welcomed him. He networked with Leitu. We were mainly raising funds for the cause of the revolution. Both of us, at the time, we felt that the negotiations that were starting were more of a sellout program. We felt strongly that we should back up people who wanted to back the revolution, who wanted to continue with the revolution. And all our network in terms of where we could raise the funds, where we could get something and sell it off, take a portion for ourselves and hand over to some cells that were all over Western Cape, more especially the PAC ones, which he had a relationship with. And so I quickly discovered that Pakiso was a well-trained, well-refined revolutionary. Um, he was trained on guns. I mean, the guy could handle any gun, he could clean any gun, he could shoot at high speed, accuracy, without any sweating hand or so. He was very, very comfortable with ammunition. And to me, it was a shocker because I didn't have that background. I was just a political activist who wanted to support the underground activities. And Azanla was not performing at all. So the PAC was the one that could uh, satisfy that, that, that anger, that edginess of seeing action. Fast forward, uh, we became, as I said, we became family friends. We protected each other. And Pakiso was a socialite, but most people don't know that. He could socialize, the guy could dance. I mean, he could combine a revolutionary a dancer, and the other element with him, he was very streetwise, extremely streetwise. I learned a lot from him just to calculate to, to terms of analyzing the situation and trying to get out of trouble quickly. Uh, he had a network. He was well-traveled, he, he was slightly older than myself, so I benefited from his experience and his streetwiseness. Also, on the other side, I could see that he has been raised by a hustler. But Pagiso could hustle with anything to make money. Literally anything. We used everything our way. We used um, commodities, rough diamonds, uh, gold uh, dust, everything that was, we could lay our hands on. We traded it off. And, and, and we managed to get some bit of cash for ourselves, to back ourselves up. He had a child. While he was at school, he was supporting his child and his mother at the same time. He loved his family, he loved his brother, uh, Tebe. I, I was relating yesterday to Tebe, how Pakiso organized school to take, Te, to take Tebe out of trouble and put him in school at, at Pente. So, fast forward, um, out of our, our dealings, Pakiso got arrested at my place with guns and 
We had to bail him out. We had to keep that information away from his mother. I also discovered yesterday that uh, at his place that his mother didn't know that Pakiso got arrested and he was sentenced with a suspended sentence of over 10 years suspended sentence. We subsequently used the TRC to, to, to clear his name as an applied activist. He got amnesty. And fast forward, he got a job at Idasa. He moved to, from Idasa to the Department of Tourism under Martinez van Skalvik. He went to the Gauteng uh, Premier. And subsequently, I think his last job was at uh, Echurileni Municipality. My brother, as, as, as I relate, uh, I mean, we related to each other as brothers, was everything to a lot of people, not only myself. He groomed a lot of youngsters. I would uh, mention names like Lozmo, Pohiso, Whitey. These are guys who were younger than us that he mentored and took him under his wing as friends. Um, on the other side, he remained that big brother to me, he would call me to order. He, he was not scared to, to speak the truth to me, even if I, didn't, I wasn't comfortable. But more than anything else, he was demonstrated to myself to say, you keep your family very close, you empower your family, you empower your friends, you empower their children, because that's the only way we can build each other and have a sustainable families, livelihood. He had undying love for black people. Everyone who came across him, but he saw had undying love for black people. He was a good listener. He had a, a very sharp intellect as a person, at a personal level. But he could separate uh, his, his, his life. He, I always say, there was Paki so the the streetwise Totsi that other people know him to be. There was Paki so the professional. There was Paki so a brother, a father to his family and friends. We have lost a very good friend, a dear brother. I I can't even. I'm short of words to explain how most of us are feeling right now. I hope that his family would try to make sense of this, his children that he loved dearly, would um, try to, to take whatever they saw in him and, and, and try to maintain his legacy, more especially in education, supporting each other and loving black, black people. He loved black people dearly. Lastly, I would like to say that uh, my family in Cape Town, they are in pain right now because Pagiso was a big brother, not just to myself, but to my family. I would like to say that we are thankful to his mother. He gave us a son. He gave my mother a son in Cape Town. He gave all of us a son. Thank you very much, Mama. Thank you. This is mom, the entire Matibula family, and his friends. Sorrow fills our hearts this sad moment, a sorrow that is deep and personal. Pakiso Matibula has silently closed the door of life and departed from us. Our lives will be empty in the areas that he had brightened for us. Albert Einstein once said, the value of a man should be seen in what he gives and not in what he is able to receive. In one word, Pakiso was a man who gave. He gave much to his work. For example, Pakiso was behind the successful inaugural Ekurunani Tourism Conference in 2016, which was attended by more than 500 delegates. That is why Ladies and gentlemen, as we are gathered here to say goodbye to him, I would like to speak in celebration of his life. He was a life 
that demand notice. A life that exemplified brilliance. A life that inspired emulation. A life that burned so that others' paths were led. Pakiso joined the city of Ekuruleni Economic Development Department in June 2015 as divisional head, tourism development and marketing. He completed his five-year term in June 2020. Pakiso was a thinker, a visionary who was brilliant, innovative and creative. As such, he contributed much to the development of tourism in the city. He generously gave us his, his knowledge, his expertise, and skills. Pakiso was living proof of how fine a person can be. He was a good boss to people in his church. He was also a good friend to many of us and a great colleague. The character of the life he lived might be summed up in few words. He was sincere, he was earnest, and he was loyal. As divisional head responsible for tourism development and marketing, Pakiso led his staff in such a way that exemplified leadership. He gave energy, commitment, and inspiration to his staff and to others with whom he worked. The Pakiso I remember was a happy Pakiso. One who not only was cheerful in himself, but who gave much cheerfulness to others. He had a beautiful smile, a sense of humor, and a gentle soul. In his role as divisional head responsible for tourism development and marketing, he worked with passion, integrity, and energy. By his death, all the people who knew him, especially his former colleagues at the city of Ekorulen, will miss a highly intelligent, vibrant individual with a rare friendliness and charm of personality. Paki was a genuinely warm and wonderful individual. One we will miss greatly. Our sorrow is lessened only slightly with the comforting thought that we had the privilege to know him. Rest in peace to our former colleague, brother and friend. I thank you. 2021 marks uh, exactly 30 years uh, anniversary of our friendship with uh, Pageso Matebula. My name is Vugile Pogwana. We met in Cape Town when I was a student at the University of the Western Cape and resided at the Solomon Mahlangu Freedom College resident known as Somafko. Uh, Pakiso had come to Cape Town obviously to pursue further his studies in BA in uh, uh, political science and uh, we came across our cultural we came across our cultural group and we preferred that since then we never look back what particularly struck me about uh, Pakiso or Paki as he was fondly known was his uh, cool demeanor uh, the fact that he was a consummate intellectual a scholar, a, a gentleman, always elegantly dressed. He'll be seen dead without a gown uh, in the morning or draped in pajamas. Uh, he had uh, attire for every occasion, for every season. And now it's his season to pass on, to join his ancestors in the other world. As we bid him farewell, we know that um, our brothers and sisters, his children are heartbroken. But there should be joy in everyone's heart to know that Pagiso will continue to live beyond the grave. The friendships that he has forged amongst us. Uh, I remember not so long ago he introduced me to 
uh, his brother Utebe, and I think we'll continue with that. That's what he left us. He blessed us with that. And Pagaso will not uh, allow people who do not mix or match to come together. He was always very vigilant about things like that. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great loss. Um, just two days before he admitted himself at the hospital, he helped me through his uh, partnership in the auto company for me to secure myself a car. Surely the car will perish, um, probably sell it in a few years or so. But what will continue to linger and um, continue to be indebted is Pakistan's humility, generosity of spirit, and the way he really conducted himself amongst their family and friends. He was such a loving, free-spirited soul consistent, principled, and very ethical uh, person to the core. For Pagiso, it was easy to socialize with gangsters. It was easy to socialize with millionaires. It was easy to socialize with academics, you know. He had this ability to be a chameleon and fit in easily in all these environments, such was his upbringing. And we thank uh, his parents and his mother, uh, especially for, for ensuring that Pagiso continued to, wherever he was, to take with him those family values. We had broken and um, like to say that uh, sleep well, son of my father, until we meet again on the other side. Greetings to the entire family Matebula. Greetings to community Munisi. Greetings to friends family members, extended family members and relatives. I also send greetings from uh, the comrades Zapaki in the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Uh, I also send greetings from my family, Chipape, from my wife. And I greet you in the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Uh, it is indeed a sad day, but I, t I make a choice, Hakasheko, that this is the loss that I'm not going to take, that this is the loss that I choose to go against. It leads us all through a memorial. I'm going to bring everything best that I know about Bagiso. I'm not going to choose the loss. I'm going to choose the gain through the life of Bagiso. I met him way back in the early 80s, specifically in Anakar Kabuma, 80 to 83. We were still young men, teenagers, so to say. Uh, the first confrontation was that we grew up in a township an element of violence from bullying young men had begun to wield knives and so we also had to decide our own knives we packed them in our school books so that whenever we were confronted by bullies they knew not to get to the bedside, yeah, Pakiso, because he was towering over a lot of our youth. Because so his bravity, his bravery was known. So I had a cover. I had a friend, and I had a cover. We passed through that phase, and were introduced to violent politics we were facing an a formidable enemy yeah the settler colonial regime and this is how we were introduced to the politics we started first 1983 really a poetry group in the late Carter Seleke Renalebo, his wife too was there. Quite a few people, Bo Viva, they were part and parcel of that. Um, Bo Dennis Mulaba, they were part and parcel of that. 
and then early higher in 1984 when COSAS introduced um, the riots into our schools, Balwana Lane, age limit, corporal punishment, the establishment, Babata, the establishment of SRCs, Babata to do away with forced uniforms. We took center stage, stage to lead the students. Together, Lebo Paki, we would we were now introduced into national liberation politics Zanagoyeo, through the Doweya, the Azanian National Youth Unity. We are the first group. Yeah, the Azanian National Youth Unity we are the first cell. We are operated underground as young men, as young boys, even as teenagers. Uh, we were introduced to that struggle. Uh, I remember uh, we always picked up our mandate from the ground. Stay away. We had to protect our, our, our mothers. We had to protect our communities because stay soft. So we had to do something. We set out sail. So sometimes we would camp. Um, and then in the early hours, I remember pass one, we would go around Shebins, rinse the fellow learners, rinse my level, and then we would go to the school, and we would go to the school, and we would go to the petrol bomb. And then we would go to the school, to the nearest place, we would go to the school, and 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 we would go to the township, and we would go to the school, Spetlele, nearly takes nearly takes a rank and also a bus rank. Refiller chesedi base mono, renal agreement till but but takes then they would not move on that day. Retamar matelas stationing, retale petrol kaudima train rail latele petrol pomi raike na kaudimo raike na stationing ubone fella mo loso utla but wadi babale bana babale because ne babo nor there's something happening so automatically. Stay away, stay away in a sebate. Here about to house in Barbara Balo and Maddy Station in Babata or Shapa, but Bafuman or Batabata. But pick up the pamphlets who say Baboni di Besidi Chow saying Baboni Treni Duca, so they had to run. And somehow, Lera graduated Rakala Jale. We were introduced into the politics of the gun that is through the Azanian People's Liberation Army. We were the first cell that started operating Lebo Tsepo di Lele, Lebo Sipoma Shaba. The, both of whom are late liba bango babanga tanga taba nerisebeza lebona and that was a very difficult time because ile ea rinsa le skolo rasole but i like one thing about pakiso pakiso kimutona dula ali ahatella apihella hore dinto di tsamae katsela eilung hore udi plenne so he was he managed to go to school he managed to go to school and he fellowshiped with other people but the most important part in my life korpakiso was always there when i was in trouble during the nakotse when during the knife wielding age abashimane bane ba tswara di tipa ba matastrateng ba ba itsang eh he was there besides me ka botel le ba hai ne re gona o hlola dintwa tse ne during the time I was struggling, uh, he saved me from various situations, say the family the other time. But because of time, it no matter fell. And I eventually got arrested and sentenced to 75 years, and I spent 21 years in prison. But he saw us always there. He came through for me. He said to me, I remember he said, Emon, what can I do for you? Don't tell me about the past. Tell me about where we are going. And then I told him what Kikena school. And then he supported my school. And then uh, he financed uh, part of my studies. He bought for me some necessities. And when I got out of prison, he was one of the very first people that I met and the joy that I was in his face because he felt or no HK Prayaka, then we have a way forward. And then uh, the, the last phase of my life, he was uh, of his life, he was there. Hanekin uh, Samahadi offered me a, a, a venia high, and then I went around Kiluksan Totaka. And then the last time I saw Paki was on the 13th of December when I was getting married in Rustenburg. 
he offered his kumbi yata yafita ya tu samone tu sate. But above all, like I said, I am not going to take this loss because kehopula manzua mampaki in his life is part of the people that molded my character towards being a pastor with all his contributions. Whether negative or positive, Imba, this is what led me to come and, and, and proclaim the word of God. And I'm, I wouldn't have done justice. Haki sa lokola manzwe a comfort. Kiko pa hopu tzale lapa. Hore, we are faced today. Lifula paki hasi fluke. It is an enemy. Bible ya ishalo sa ere, the last enemy to be defeated. Kili fu. So ki bata uretzi ibe hore, it is by choice. Renale khe toho na juanu. Because when we are unable to, to make a decision, when we are unable to make a choice, let us make a choice to draw in, to reel in the resources. Salehodimo Bible Eri Haibuaka Revelations chapter number 20, verse 6. Eri blessed and happy is he who has part in the first resurrection for the second death. This is a time Yahunka choice. We want to connect to heaven and the only way. By believe it is through Jesus Christ. This time I'm taking a decision to take to, to win over death because the history of there's only one person who came out tops which is Jesus Christ. So as a word of encouragement, as I come to pray, to make this prayer in the depth of his heart to say papa ka libitso le le matla la morena jeso ri pulela di bitsa rona ri a sokolo hapela hao ri bula di di pelo tsa rona jwa le ka mamati a o amohela jeso kreste a kene a buse maphelong a rona ka libitso le le matla la jeso kreste amen dimela ke kopane le pakiso ka 19 1979 har kala kopana ri kopana section ale hang go nwa le nna ke le kgoheso den kopana hape hape ser kopana re high school ala fang high school 1981 <laughs> Har pata ke re shota re sna chereta o dipatala. Me pa kiso ke ha re nka re a re fa chereta re tsa mara lo re ka di ntho feme mana se betsa teng kwa pinoni. Ra tsa mara re ke isa di juvetse ka tlonye na na ka o fela yona e sentsa ne fela la o sna di ara sections. E fela di kule. Ra re ke isa ra re ke isa re tata ra nka chereta teng ha re tla mele ro patala ra eje. La ra monga chereta fitla o seng. Ratsa ga ka moreng ra ba le me ha roheletsa seretsa ma strateng ga tsa marara lo tsa macheleteng gore lo kole ka molone re sile dintho re rekisa teng ra thola chelete ra hutla ra patala mpane ra patala ka mora beketse ka ba ntedi hape hape utlwa mono ra kena high school ka tle ho molone re ra kopana le tshepo dilele bo nunu mbele bo pabalo ha shatsi o thabiso Bolong or na hane reza din tune sir diye zaka ufelar le ine group. Group ya runa nelo no, kona no baby zaka oriki peace maker mola skolo mola. Ana din tuli kolunze din principala runa le pi le tawiana. Na kona orenga rumele skolunze barba ata orza merule za peace with the other students. Apart from that, nelo no pagiso lena rigemse itza holo rabata loya university. In Pandratsi or no, we never had the funds. 
chelete ya lene rena le yona ne le rona ha re kopa kopa nya re tsa dintho re khona rona re thusane ka yena ya huja la o yetsa dintho nya na tsedintse le rona tla khona rona di body re ka body part and all that go tla mo ne re sna engwe empaneng wa nne le motho ra tangwe persevere ha ho he managed he went to the university of the western cape bo le rona le ha ntsa go tla tenga go tla ntsa ruta ba ba dintho tse le rona ne ntse re tshola pele ka tsona la khona rona re ka fela rona re motivated especially nna wa nne ke rata rona le nna give something else ka manager ka khona rona ke thole body national diploma and all that go tla mo ne ka thola msebetsi ka sebetsi la ntsa le go skolo ntsa etsa dintho ntsa ne romela di notes ke mo phone ela ona ntho ke ke di batlang na ne romela bo di buka nyana bo eng 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 go rona le nna ke khona rona ke ke tswele pele ene la go khona rona re tswele pele go hlella mona mo re leng teng ka xeng go thaka ene ke mthaka le ngwe rona o ke ke bo mo lebala bo phelo mba hawe ene le go no motho na solve the problems a batho a hola a sa khetho na o mangwe tswa ka bya ka le nna ke le tsena le ba bang ba lo no ba motseng la hletswa hulu le lapa le la hletswa hulu ha moyo ha o rwa ba le ka khotsa jehova na ne ile mme o buetse la tile ha o bokwe o tlotliswe le bitso la hae amen Hello, you can do better. Say Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, happy day. <laughs> he loves. This letter here are showing love to me. They've always shown love to me. And you must always show that love. They've got important things to do today. They are supposed to be resting. They're supposed to be watching soccer. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we don't always meet like this, but we, 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 we don't we do deserve the best. But this is the beginning of an adult's life. It has many challenges. It has many temptations. It's now up to you how you interpret it. If it means that you're going to excel as an adult and take leadership, Good day, my tabula family, relatives, friends, all protocol observed. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am at an absolute loss for words as I didn't expect to be in a position of giving a final tribute to Baki, my tabula, so soon. But our ways are not God's way, and so I'm honored to be able to share with you a sight to Mr. Matebula we saw, we knew, and loved as his Ekuholeni family. I first met Mr. Matebula in 2015 when he was appointed the Divisional Head Tourism Development and Marketing. I was his secretary for five years and I used to address him affectionately as Ntate Matebula. After working with him over the years, I got to understand his management and leadership styles. I got to know him as a human being and not just as my boss or divisional head. It was as these many layers of Ntatema Tebula that got revealed that I realized how privileged I was to be working under such an incredible soul. Our relationship grew and he became my mentor. When I lost my father in 2017, he helped me through my grief and assumed me many roles my dad left that of an encourager, supporter, cheerleader, and sounding board. He was my brother and a friend. He valued me not only as his secretary, but also 
cared about my well-being and mental health. Leaders like him don't come by very often. I have learned a lot from him. Tate Matebula was a perfectionist, and anyone who knew him can attest to this attribute of his. His quest for perfect made everyone around him strive for better and to deliver more and better each time. He brought out the best in his team, kept us on our toes, and we're better today of it. We may not have said it, but today it needs to be said. Ndate Matebula, thank you for being an inspirational leader you were. Your light shone bright and sadly it had stopped. You will continue to live through the lives you've touched in ways you may never have known. Some examples of times I'll always remember about our early days are. He was the kind of person that when I send him a report, document, I must be certain it has no spelling errors. Scrutinize it and head facts. I learned from the onset of us working together that he means business and sure kept me on my toes. When I came to him with a work problem or concern that needed his attention, he would listen to me and say, okay, I hear you, but what is the solution? If I say I don't know, he will say, then what is the point of bringing the matter to my attention? It was his, it was to make one to go for their comfort zone. Think out of the box. I must say, I learned the hard way. He was strict, but in a good way. He built mutually respectful relationship with all of us. When he left tourism division in 2020, we continued to talk once a while as it is the norm with friends. On the 4th of January 2021, he dropped me a WhatsApp message to let me know he is not well and has been admitted to hospital. On the 5th of June at 6.30 a.m., he sent me a WhatsApp that read as follows. Good morning, Ausi, and thank you for being there always. Pray for me, Ausi. Reflecting on it now, I realize he was in a way preparing me for what is about to come. Little did I know that his text, which I received on the 6th of Jan, will be my last goodbye to him. When I received a call from his family to let me know of his passing, I was shattered. I can't even put it in words how I felt and even now how I feel. I wish if... I wish... It were different. I wish he was still around as he still had so much to give. But it isn't so. All I can say is Ntatema Tebula, I am glad you crossed my path. Working with you has been one of a hell one of a hell of a right. You will forever be missed. Rest in peace, Ntatema Tebula. I hope your soul finds eternal peace. His friends, ex-colleagues at Tourism Division, our Department Economic Development and colleagues at the Edinville Civic Center, and colleagues from various departments in Ekoroleni and Tourism stakeholders, we have indeed lost a giant. To the, Mateb to the Matebula family, we can understand the, the death of your loss, but may you find comfort and support in the people that surround you and care for you at this time. I pray that you find hope in the memories you so lovingly carrying in your mind 
and in your hearts of the precious times you shared with Bike. With that, I leave you with this verse from the Bible. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5 verse 4 God hears your cries and he knows your pain. So be comforted to know that he is close to you and comfort will come from his presence. Please call on and lean on God at this time. Thank you, Esther Mashilwani, representative. Decency, duty, reliability, honor, dignity, respect. These are all qualities that my father not only held in high esteem, but practiced every day during his time on earth. He was a serious and disciplined man, but he could never resist the opportunity to have a laugh with friends and loved ones when given half the chance. Rest in peace, Pakiso Ben Matebula. Thank mm-hmm. you.